you are welcome as we enter in this morning we enter his gates with thanksgiving and we enter his courts with praise we're worshiping our God for waking us up this morning we are so thankful the Lord woke us up this morning he put the breath of life inside of us we have health we have strength we have so much to give God praise and thanks for morning that I arise, it's a gift from God. And so this morning, I want you to receive your gift. And it's the gift of life. It's the gift of joy. It's the gift of shalom. The Spirit of the Lord is already here. We have already entered in. We are in the throne room of heaven. Worshipping with the elders and the angels and the seraphims. Let's continue to worship the Lord this morning. It's a simple song playing in the background. My beloved is the most beautiful. And his name is Yeshua. As we get ready for and we prepare for Passover, let's worship the Lord and let's perfume his throne with our sweet fragrances. Frankincense, Rose of Sharon.
And let your will be done in our lives, on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come in our Passover service tonight, tomorrow night, all through the week. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in our homes this morning and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come in our lives. Overwhelm us with your love. Your glory fills us. The beauty of the Lord rises upon us this morning. arising over you this morning saints of God I want to give you the portion of scripture we are in the week of singing and drinking the rains from heaven our portion of scripture this morning is taken from Psalms 46 verse 4 to 5 there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of our God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And so, right early. Psalm 46, verse 4 to 5 is your portion. God is in the midst of us. Hey. <laughs> you are in the midst of us, Lord. You are the most beautiful one. Among thousands and ten thousand, you are the beautiful one. Yes, you are. You are the righteous one. You are the most holy one. You are in the midst of us. We feel your glory. We feel you wrapping us in your arms of love. Be exalted this morning. in the midst of us. Psalms 46. There is a river that is flowing from the throne room of heaven and it's flowing into our prayer rooms. It's flowing into our homes. That river is flowing and every time we come into the presence of the Lord and that river flows, it's a river of refreshing. It's a river of glory. It's a river of healing. It's a river of blessing. It's a river of revelation. And all you've got to do is submerge yourself in that river. You can drink as much as you want. Some people, they may want to go ankle deep. Some may want to go waist deep. And then there are others who say, No, Lord, I'm going to submerge my entire body in that river and that's what the Lord is saying this morning there is a river whose streams make glad the city of our God there is gladness in the river 
There is joy in the river. There is peace in the river. There is every anointing that you can think of in the river. And so I want you to receive from heaven this morning as you submerse yourself. We arose this morning into the miracle of a new day. I'm glad to be alive. I'm blessed to be alive. I'm thankful for life, for health, for strength. I'm thankful for the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. We are in the rivers of God. We come through the blood. And now we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Who can move us? No one. Psalms 46 and verse 5 says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. She will not be moved. God shall help her. And so this morning I came to announce, God is in the midst of you. He is in the midst of our families. He is in the midst of your situation. God is right here with us. And he is bringing us help. Whatever help you need, God is bringing it. The Lord is bringing you help. The Lord is bringing you help. God is in the midst. When I look around and I can't see anyone, I see God. I see the King of Kings. I see the angels and I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. I came to announce this morning, God is in the midst of your cases. God is in the midst of your homes. God is in the midst of your families and he's making a way. Oh, hallelujah. God is in the midst. God is in the midst. God is in the midst. Isaiah, Psalms 46 and verse 5. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. I came to announce to you this morning, as long as God is your foundation and your eyes is upon Yeshua, the beautiful one, you will not be moved. I will not be moved. No matter what storms come, no matter the battles of life, I will not be moved. I want you to declare that this morning. I will not be moved. My solid foundation is unshakable because I'm built on the rock. I'm planted on the rock. I am on the rock. I will not be moved. You will not be moved. Oh, God is my refuge, my strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. We will not be moved. You will not be moved. Man of God, woman of prayer, you will not be moved. You're on the rock. You're on the solid rock of the Messiah. It's an unmovable rock. It's a sure foundation. I'm telling you, we are building the things of the Lord on the rock, on the rock, on the rock with the blueprints of heaven. We are building on the kingdom foundation. And the kingdom foundation is established on the chief cornerstone, Yeshua. Hey, We will not be moved. My home will not be moved. My family will not be moved. My faith will not be moved. Come what may, I'm not moving. Come what may, I'm not selling out. I cannot be bought. I cannot be sold. I'm already sold out for the king. I cannot be moved. I cannot be persecuted any more than I already am because I'm, I'm on the rock. I'm on the rock. I'm on the rock. Oh, Rabba Kasata. You got to be, you got to believe it and you got to declare it and you got to say, say it out loud. I'm on the rock. Yeah. The people in this hour that will last are the people that are on the rock. I know what I'm telling you. The rock people, kingdom people are people that are on the rock. We are on the rock of the word. We are on the rock of scripture. We are on the rock of worship. I'm on the rock and I will not be moved. Yes, I refuse to be moved. Oh, Sata Karabaka Sata. The Lord is raising up 
a rock people, kingdom people, men and women of prayer that cannot be sold. I cannot be sold out. I cannot be bought out. I'm already sold out for the king. There is nothing that you can bring to uh, manipulate my destiny. I want you to have that mentality. There is nothing that you can offer to manipulate my stand in God. No, no, no blessing, no, no houses, no lands, no cars, no material gain. Nothing of the world. The things of this world have grown so dim to me. Nothing of this world can move me to, to sell out. I'm telling you, you've got to have that mindset in this last hour. You've got to have the mindset that you are built on the rock and nothing can sell you out. Nothing can move you. I have seen good Christian people sell out because of money, sell out because of a blessing, sell out because of, of food, because of a, a meal. I have seen people sell out in the years of my time in ministry and I'm not that very old. So can you imagine the seniors? They will tell you that they have seen it. They have seen it. And some of you all would have seen it also. You would have seen people sell out. They are selling out every day. The great apostasy is upon us. Good, good sons and daughters. Good, good men of prayer. Women of prayer are bowing to the systems of this world. They're bowing to Antichrist. Bowing, bowing to, to the things of the world selling out switching allegiances but this morning I decree and I declare over your life your allegiance will be to the Lamb your allegiance will be to the Lamb of God I decree and declare over your life you will not sell out I want us to decree and declare that I will not sell out you gotta declare it you gotta make a stand you gotta decree something you got to say something. You cannot take it in your own strength that you're, that you're just going to go through the motions in this last days. Because good, strong people that once served the Lord are selling out. And they are bowing to the systems of the world. You got to decree it and declare it, beloved. This is why... This is why we've been calling the nations to pray for all these years. We've been calling the nations to pray, preparing your, your temple, preparing your spirit man to house the presence of the Lord, to come out from the outer courts and to move into the inner courts. Because being in the outer courts is not safe. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. In the outer courts, there's still the chatter of the world. In the outer courts, there's still the, the wind of what's taking place in the world. In the outer courts, there's still a lot of talk, a lot of chatter, a lot of contrary winds are still blowing in the outer courts. So it's not good to be in the outer courts. You have to come into the inner courts and place yourself there at the throne of heaven, at the feet of Yeshua, that you would not sell out. You would not sell out because you, you may think that you are strong and you can stand up under trials. I've seen people willfully walk into places where they know they should not be going. They have willfully walked into those places, willfully walked into the trap of the enemy like a bird in the snare of the fowler. And then when the situation happens, they say, well, I didn't know that that would have happened. No, beloved. They, they weren't built on the rock. Their mind was still uncertain. Their spirit was still uncertain. There was no stand. They did not take a stand. And so this morning, the Lord is saying, every one of us, you have to take that stand in your spirit. In your spirit that when the situation comes, you will not bow and you will not fall. So don't willfully, don't willfully allow anything to come to tempt you don't be tempted don't be tempted by satan's offers remember 
just before Yeshua began to rise in his end time ministry, the enemy came with temptations. And the enemy said, you are the son of God, you have all this power. Why don't you turn this rock into a bread and eat it? I know that you have power, you're, you're anointed. You can do this and God will not be upset with you. You can turn this rock into a bread. Do it. Do it. Do it, Yeshua. Do it. Turn this rock into a bread and eat. And Jesus, because he had already yielded his will, his spirit, his mind, he had yielded his will to the will of the Father. He was not in the business of doing any magic show for Satan. He did not care too much about what the devil taught. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, his appetite, his appetite did not tempt him. His hunger to get that bread did not tempt him because it was a false bread. It was a counterfeit bread. It was a sabotage to his destiny. It was bread that if he had eaten that bread or taken that bait, he would have lost his entire destiny. The, in, this, in this end times, I want you to understand that there is a, a false bread that is being served. There is a counterfeit bread that is being served from the altars of false people all around the world. The churches that are in the state of apostasy, they are decorating the bread to make it look appealing to the unsuspecting and to those that have no discernment. It's a false bread. It's a false bread. It's false, beloved. It's false. It's false. And so this morning, I pray that you will hear the word of the Lord. Don't bite the bait. I want you to write that down this morning. Don't bite the bait. Don't bite the bait. Don't you dare bite the bait. Women of prayer, you've come too far. Don't eat the bait. Don't bite the bait. Man of God, prophet of God, you've come too far. Don't bite the bait. It's a setup. And so every person under the sound of my voice, as the Holy Spirit gives you divine direction, may your eyes be open to see and may your ears be open to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in these last days. You've come too far. You have dropped and shed off a lot of yokes, a lot of weights. Don't allow anyone to put yokes and weights and baits upon you. Don't buy the bait. Stay in the place of liberty. Stay in the place of joy. Stay in the place of freedom. Stay planted. Serve the Lord with gladness. And don't buy the bait. You already have everything that you need for life and godliness. You already have everything. Stay in the company of the righteous. Stay in the company of the righteous. I'll tell you a quick testimony, right? In the time that I have left. I'll take two minutes to give you this testimony. There was a powerful uh, worshiper that I, that I knew many many years ago and she was really really doing well in terms of worship her worship life was really powerful and she had an anointing on her life she was called to do great things for the Lord right she and uh, she had a, a wonderful husband and they loved each other and they worked together very well in ministry and um, because because of that um, anointing on her life to sing worship, she also had an anointing to uh, minister to people on the streets. So she would just be able to talk to people and um, get them to come to church and stuff like that. She was 
charismatic. She had a charismatic anointing, an anointing to be able to talk to people and get them to follow, right? So, because of that anointing and that grace that God had given her, she felt that she could have gone into the bars to start witnessing to people and talking to the people in the bars. And she she began going into into the bars after work to talk to people to tell them about Jesus. And when we talk when we talked to her about it, we told her that wasn't such a good idea because there is a line of separation. And um, as a woman, that probably shouldn't be the place that she should be going into. And uh, she said, "No, I have the Holy Spirit." I'm covered by the blood, I, and the Holy Spirit is the one that led me there. And so we said, okay. And she kept going into the bars. So the visits moved from going to the bars to witness, and just to be in the environment to talk to people. It moved from daytime visits to nighttime visits. And then all of a sudden, we heard that her and her husband were drinking in the bars with the very sad people that they said that they were called to witness. So it moved from going just to show their face because one of the bar owners was their friends. It moved from going to show their face and being nice to the bar owners and to their friends to actually nighttime visits and drinking in the bars. And the drinking in the bars, it does not stop there. I'm telling you about the spirit of being naive. I'm telling you about not listening to the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you about the dangers of mixing your company. The Bible says, do not be unequally yoked. What business? Bad cor company corrupts good manners. So it doesn't stop there. They started doing night visits now. And they started drinking beers and other strong drinks in the bars. Because it was... The people were their friends and they didn't want to separate from their friends and they love their friends and it's, it's like I'm a child of God and I should be showing love so they felt that they should be in the, those environments and it moved now from drinking in the nights to the parties it moved from the parties to skimpy clothing half naked clothing so the worshiper that once worshipped the Lord and stayed pure and stayed in a pure stream switched and started going deeper and deeper into the deception. Skimpy clothes now, strong drinks, dancing in the nightclubs just to appease their friends, to make their friends think that they were still nice and they were still um, user friendly. And beloved, I want to tell you that today, that man and that woman is now divorced because in that very same bar, she met a man and she started having an affair with that man and it brought the spirit of fornication into her marriage and her and her husband began to fight and fall out and the marriage is now broken up all because of the spirit of compromise. May you never compromise in this new season. May the Lord open your eyes and give you standing power to rebuke. Rebuke the spirit of compromise. Rebuke the spirit of deception. I rebuke the bait. May the Lord open your eyes to see the bait. May the Lord open your eyes to understand that we are in the last days and darkness is in the earth and deep darkness is covering people and the enemy is setting traps for the righteous may the lord open your eyes to see the trap may the lord open your eyes may the lord give you grace may the lord give you new strength may the lord give you standing power that you will not willfully walk into the traps of the, the enemy may the lord strengthen you and may the lord strengthen me this prayer is for me also it's for you and it's for me because we are walking in the, in the path of the righteous. We are walking in the narrow path. We are in the narrow path. And if you're in the narrow path, you got to stay in the narrow path. May the Lord give us discernment. Let's pray that prayer right now. Say, may the Lord give us discernment. Lord, give us discernment. Lord, give us discernment. 
that we will not be naive to the traps of the enemy. Lord, give us discernment that we will not fall into temptation. Lord, give us discernment that we will not fall into the traps of evil company. Lord, give us discernment that we will not be uh, unequally yoked. Lord, give us discernment because not everything that glitters is gold. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, means it. Father, cause us to examine fruit. Examine fruit. Let us examine fruit. And Father, even in those cases, there are still the deception, Lord, is so dark that, Father, it will take great wisdom and understanding from the Holy Spirit. Give us that grace, Lord. Give us that grace, Lord. Teach us your ways, Lord, to make wise decisions. I just sense that the Lord is giving us a greater discernment in this season, every one of us, both you and me, because we are the righteous and we're walking in the pathway of the righteous and we don't want to, to fall in this last days. We've come so far. We've come too far, beloved. Matthew 7 and 14. Let's see. I think that's the scripture. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leads to eternal life. I said Matthew 7 and 14. Thank you, Prayer Ambassador, and it's still assured. So we've just got to ask the Lord for wisdom and for discernment. And we cannot afford to, to bite the, the bait. Don't bite the bait. That's all I'm hearing the Lord say this morning. Don't bite the bait. And bait is something, it looks very appealing. When a rat is uh, lured into a, a trap, right? Why does the rat go to that trap? Because of the cheese that's there. It looks so delicious. It looks so inviting. It looks so appealing. And it's like, wow, I just have to go. I just have to taste that. I have to go and eat of that. And that's how the rat gets caught in the trap, right? Because of the bait. The bait looks so inviting, so appealing. So, you know, let's just continue in prayer because we are in the last moments right before the king comes. And as we know that there is a great apostasy happening before our very eyes, many great people are falling to the temptations and the traps of the world. I want you to pray for pastors. As I get ready to close, I want us to pray for all pastors. Never stop praying for your pastors because when we look at the world news, we're seeing a lot of pastors falling. And it's a very sad thing. It's very sad when pastors and prophets and men of prayer and women of prayer fall. When they fall from grace, it's a very sad thing because it doesn't only hurt them and their families, it hurts the entire body of Christ. So this morning, we are here under the grace of God and under the fear and the trembling of the Lord. Let's pray a prayer right now for pastors. Father, we pray for every pastor around the nations of the world. We pray for every prophet. We pray for every prophetess. Everyone that has that title and they are in the office, Father. Lord, we lift them up before you. And I pray that you will release a, a new grace and a new power cause pastors and ministers and, and deacons and deaconess and apostles all around the world, give us that grace to be able to discern right from wrong. Give us that grace to be able to discern the traps and the snares of the enemy. Give us that grace. Give all pastors around the world new eyes, Lord. Eyes to see the pitfalls of the enemy. Eyes to see to penetrate the darkness because deep darkness is in the earth. Father, I pray for standing power for every shepherd, every pastor, every deacon, every deaconess, every prophet, every evangelist, every teacher, every minister. 
Lord, give them grace to stand in the midst of trials, in the midst of battles, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of contention. Give your fivefold leaders grace to stand. And Father, give them grace to overcome every temptation of the enemy, that they will not fall into the traps, the pits, and the snares of the devil. In Yeshua's mighty name, Amen and Amen. 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 Well, beloved, that brings us to the end of our morning prayer this morning. Why don't I bring on our song of blessing this morning? I seal every prayer in the precious blood of Yeshua and I call it done. Now we are going to be on tonight. We are preparing for Passover and I'm going to be uh, bringing uh, a prophetic word for Passover on tonight for all of our online friends. I want you to get your bread, get your wine. We're going to have a special communion tonight as well to seal off everything that we received in this 21 days of revival and outpouring. We're going to seal it off tonight by Holy Communion, right? So get your bread, get your wine. Uh, those of you that have your prayer candles, you can get your prayer candles. We're going to be lighting up our prayer candles this evening. It's two candles, white candles. If you uh, don't have the tall ones, the Jewish candles, you can use what you have, right? That's fine. You can use your small candles or your scented candles. But get your candles and be with us tonight as we press into Passover. And Passover is all about miracles through the power of the blood of the Messiah. So we're going to be sealing off this 100 days and this 21 uh, days of awakening with the, the Passover communion. And then I'm going to be releasing a powerful prophetic word over the nations of the earth. So join us on tonight at 7 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and the Lord make his face to shine upon you. We love you everyone. Shabbat shalom.